Hello, my name is Vikas Pota. The reason why we're organizing this global showcase for World Education Week is we believe that schools have incredible expertise in making sure that learning outcomes improve. Given the state of the world, we want to see the expertise from this particular school being replicated in schools all over our planet so that the world becomes better for everyone. That is why I congratulate this school for what it does and hope that those listening can, can take away conclusions as to how they should actually approach their own improvement journeys. Thank you all for participating, and I look forward to seeing you in many of the other events this coming week. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for supporting this incredible work, without whom we couldn't have put together this global showcase. Thank you, and I wish you well for this event. Fast-paced, social, economic and technology-driven change is redefining our world. And having a broad range of skills, such as creativity and problem-solving, has become far more important than being able to memorise information. To redefine how our children learn and to empower them for the future, parents, teachers and policymakers must stop overlooking a powerful part of the solution. Learning through play. Play is the rocket fuel of child development, and there is a growing body of evidence to support that play is fundamental for children's positive growth and well-being over time. It is also an essential way to foster the skills required to thrive in today's world. The LEGO Foundation aims to build a future in which learning through play empowers children to become creative, engaged, lifelong learners. To do so, we work with a range of partners around the world to change the hearts and minds of all of those who influence children's lives through our programmes, research and advocacy, so they can all embrace the transformative power of play. Examples of what we do include making sure that caregivers, practitioners and policymakers understand the importance of play, investigating, testing and scaling new ways to bring play-based learning into homes and schools, using play to help millions of the world's most vulnerable children cope with adverse childhood experiences and toxic stress, or conducting research with some of the world's leading research institutions. Please visit our website and follow us on social media to learn more. Language connects us all. It's how friendships are formed, ideas are shared, and lessons are learned. Language is how we find understanding and express love. It's how we communicate our successes, both big and small. It lays the groundwork for learning and growth. And for an increasingly diverse student population, it can be the key to achievement in school and beyond. That's why Rosetta Stone Education is dedicated to language and literacy. We offer solutions designed to support teachers and their emergent bilingual students, recognizing and celebrating the knowledge, culture, and languages they bring to our classrooms. Our products are founded on the adaptive blended learning model for individual needs, continuous progress monitoring for better learning outcomes, and culturally responsive pedagogies for more inclusive classrooms. With solutions aligned with proficiency standards, we support language learning while exploring academic subject areas, paving the way to better outcomes. Because for all of us, language is everything. community. 
We talk a lot about teachers these days, but we rarely listen to them. Therefore, I'm truly excited to join the T4 World Education Week to hear from teachers and school leaders all over the world how we can impact learning together. I'm particularly looking forward to the Global Showcase. 100 schools sharing their expertise and best practices, I believe, will be a huge motivation for other schools around the globe. I'm equally impressed by the T4 Solutions Challenge, its finalists and their solutions to real world issues in education. This gives me hope that we can together turn around education globally. The Jacobs Foundation is a proud supporter of the T4 World Education Week because we share a vision to reimagine learning and education by bringing together the brightest people who understand how children learn. Let's do this together. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, we will start in a few minutes our presentation, but meanwhile, we would like to invite you to be part of an icebreaker activity. Uh, if you want to join this menti.com link, you can find in the slide and introduce the code that it is um, on the slide, and I will be like putting it as well in the chat, online chat of the event. So we can figure out who's attending, who's uh, behind the screen and let us know where you're coming from. And we will also uh, want to know what kind of scenario you're working in, which we will be shown in the next slide. So please feel free to answer these questions and we will be seeing all your uh, reflections live in this slide. Thank you very much. We will be starting soon. Thanks. We have people from Spain. <laughs> Ukraine. Thank you, Mexico, Tabasco, India. Thank you very much for answering our mentee. We can figure out who's listening now. Thanks very much. Mumbai, Madrid, Latvia. Thank you very much. We've got more Turkey, South Africa. So we are Mumbai, Ukraine, Spain, Serbia, international group. Thank you for attending and being here today. India, Qatar. What else? It's moving. So there's like India, London. We have a London from Okay, South Africa, Ukraine, thank you very much for being part of this panel today and for taking part of this activity while we get ready to start in a few minutes. Philippines, India, Latvia, several people from India. Thank you. And here is the second question we are suggesting you to answer if you want what scenario are you currently with teaching in? As our panel will be in the center in the hybrid model, we would like to know your scenario so we can understand where are you working and how are you facing this new situation, global situation? So we have three full online distance, one face-to-face -to, -face to blended hybrid. Thank you very much. We will see how it moves once you start to answer. Thank you very much. Blended for people now, it's okay. So 
So we have seven blended, seven full online, four face-to-face. -face. I guess that is the lowest amount working face-to-face -face now. Thank you very much. This can give us a picture of who's here and who's attending today. Thanks. Anybody else that want to share the scenario he's working in now? We are nearly starting. Okay. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, welcome everybody. My name is uh, Beatriz Carratala and I work in SEK Education Group for the last seven years. Um, welcome here. Um, um, SEK International Schools, um, we are an education group founded in 1892, uh, which brings together leadership, educational innovation and 125 years of tradition and history. Thank you and welcome everybody in this World Education Week. Thank you for being, for letting us be part. SEK International Schools cater over 5,000 students, 14 and day students from the ages of 3 and 18 years from more than 15 nationalities. In our six schools in Spain, one school in Dublin, one school in Les Alpes and one school in Qatar. University Camilo Josatela was founded 20 years ago, ago as part of the SEK Education Group. Its hallmarks are innovation, interdisciplinary studies and in international approach. We've been invited to be part of this wonderful World Education Week, where more than 100 schools have been invited to exchange their learning stories in response to SDGs. Our school in Qatar has been selected as showcase school to talk about how the hybrid model can work for everybody. As we are living in certain times with impacts all over the world, we've changed our way of living. The COVID-19 pandemic has made us painfully aware of the global nature of human existence and our dependence with others. We've learned the importance of bringing our community together and listen carefully to our families, staff and students. We've also engaged with authorities and schools around the world. Our success to date has been a large part of the power to sustain, support and listen to our communities and our global network. The panel that we are presenting today will consist on some short formal presentations based on the background research and our experience putting theory into practice as developed in a playbook. This will lead to a discussion and exploration and will finalize with a Q&A session and takeaways that we can share with all the schools that are attending today. To do so, I would love to introduce three members of our, of our superb team. First of all, I would love to introduce Daniela Kameni. She is the Associate Director of Schools for SEK International Schools. She has more than 12 years of experience in the international education around the world as classroom teacher, program coordinator and vice principal. She is also an IB PYP workshop leader, site visitor and consultant. She is also a NIASC and CIS visitor. She is certified as an international educator with ECIS. She is concept-based curriculum and instructor trainer and consultant, and she is a family language consultant too. Daniela is passionate about inquiry learning, the early years and primary education. She will be presenting today a topic on agency, co-creation and self-directed learning. Secondly, I would like to present Veronica Sunset. She is the head of the SEK International School in Qatar. She's a passionate and dedicated educator and learner. She holds a bachelor degree in English philology and a postgraduate certificate in education. Prior to her current position as head, she's also been a, a vice principal an MYP coordinator and a PYP coordinator. 
She's also a workshop lead leader for the IBPYP. She's a NIAS visitor and she's a team member of the IBMYP school visits. And last but not least, I would love to present Joaquin Rodriguez. He's our current corporate director of design, innovation, and educational technology. His work is related to the instructional design, pedag pedagogical and innovation, and technologies for learning. He's been working for the past 30 years in both the educational content development and the creative, creative industry and in various universities. He has published a dozen books related to the impact that digital technologies have in education, culture, and a way of thinking. He will talk to us about the importance of technologies to enrich learning, collaboration, and communication. So having presented the three panelists that will be today in the next hour, I would like to remind you the use of the hashtag World Edu Week that it's been created for this event in their Twitter account. I would love to invite you to please write all your comments and questions in the online chat. I will be selecting as moderator all questions that I will then address to all my colleagues in a Q&A session that we will have at the end of the presentations. So, having said all that, I would like to give the word to Daniela. She will start with her presentation on agency, co-creation and self-directed learning. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Beatrice, for that wonderful introduction. So like she has already mentioned, I will be telling you today about agency, co-creation and self-directed learning. We all know that agency is a buzzword in education and it has been for the last five years. And basically it refers to being able to give learners voice, choice and ownership of their learning. At our schools, we call this self-directed learning and mainly our goals are to make sure that students have opportunities to take initiative, make choices about how they're going to learn, follow their interests, explore their talents and their passions and set their own learning goals. We do this in two different ways. One of them is embedded within the curriculum and we also do this in a way that is extracurricular. And I will show you some examples of how we do this in these two different ways. So one of the ways that we do this within the curriculum is by making sure that students are aware and that they understand the learning expectations in each of their subject areas. Teachers take time of the routines and of the daily classroom work to make sure that students know what is expected of them. And moreover, they involve students in creating the success criteria or in identifying the ways that they will demonstrate that they have reached that learning goal or that they have achieved what was um, set out for that task. They will use different kinds of exemplars to be able to identify the positive things that they see in, in good examples of the work that is expected of them and they as a community will draw the as conclusions what is expected for them in terms of a learning goal. They also uh, have essential agreements like the one that you can see in this photo where what we really want to make sure is that it's more of a learning community where students are just as important as the teacher in terms of identifying what they know, what they can do and what they want to do as well within their learning. Um, another way that we do this is by collaborating with the is when students and teachers collaborate to together create checklists or rubrics or other forms of assessment and they participate actively in, in, in setting out what are those criteria that they are going to use to determine whether or not they've achieved a learning goal. This makes the learning much more meaningful for the student and it also allows students to be able to demonstrate what they've learned in a variety of different ways without having to have only one option to show what they have achieved and, and being able to have a say in how they want to dem demonstrate their learning. Another key way that we involve students in this process is through what we call celebrations of learning. And these can be, um, basically these are about students taking the initiative to determine how they want to demonstrate their learning to the community. And this can be either in very small or, or small group presentations or perhaps uh, with their peers or with other members of the school community, such as other students, or it can take the form of a more wider school wide event, such as a parents night or a fair where they set up a stand and they share with their parents or other members of the wider community what they have learned. 
of course, now during the online learning experience that we've had, these many of these learning celebrations have taken uh, the form of online and we've done them uh, via teams like we are in this scenario right now. Another great way that students really enjoy being able to to participate and that we make sure that we are giving our students voice is through the students councils, which are all set up across all of our schools. And this is about students choosing who which of their peers they want to represent them uh, with the leadership. Team. Um, the student councils are opportunities for students to communicate to the leadership team how they feel that their learning is going. Um, and they um, may share their interests and their needs or their petitions in different areas, such as what the school cafeteria menu is going to be or what their uniforms are going to look like. And this is just a great opportunity for them to feel like they have a genuine voice within uh, their experience in school. Um, so these are some of the ways that we ensure student agency and self-directed learning within the curriculum, but we also have other opportunities for students to be able to explore their talents and their passions and make their own choices in their learning uh, outside of the curriculum. And even though these experiences may be uh, not within the curriculum or not directly related to the subject areas, we feel that these are fantastic opportunities for them to explore learning that is lifelong, that um, really um, helps them develop their competencies and helps them in their overall holistic development within school and without school. And one, offer, uh, one example of this that we are very proud of is an initiative called SEK Lab Junior, which basically is a program in which students explore their passions and develop their entrepreneurial skills. And throughout the year, they develop um, enterprises or programs or projects or services or products that address a real world issue and they receive mentorship from their teachers in the development of this program. At the end of the year, um, a finalist is, is, is chosen through a panel of real life entrepreneurs, which are usually mothers and fathers from our own students. And for example, this the photo that you can see here is the from the cohort from last year. The winners were these two boys who created a tutorship program where school students could sign up and uh, work with student with other younger students who are in the hospitalized situation and cannot access their school because of that. This year, of course, all of these activities went on online, as you can see on the other photo that is on the left. Um, another wonderful project that we piloted last year and that we hope will continue being offered in a wider way throughout all of our schools this year and the following years is a project called Young Women's Leadership and Entrepreneurship Certificate, which was uh, held in collaboration with a school in the United States. It's basically aimed at female students uh, between the ages of 14 and 16, with the goal of exploring, of, of helping them explore their leadership skills and their and their opportunities and their and their possibilities of addressing real world problems. They used uh, through different workshops where they explored all these ideas and they use the design thinking process. They developed a solution for a problem that they chose that they felt passionate about, and then they executed that. For example, one of the students developed a set of a program of boxes where they included different learning resources for young children, and the, those boxes are then sent to children around the our 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 near nearby community for students who do not have the access to quality education. Another student, for example, created a database where you can log in to find out uh, sustainable brands when you are looking for where to do your shopping. So mainly the objective of that was to make sure that consumers have uh, information at the moment that they are taking decisions on where to spend their money. So these um, ex experiences like these really help our students be able to take action in a meaningful way and in relation to something that they are really interested in. Our the opportunities that we had last year in terms of online learning because of the pandemic were not uh, not because we weren't in school face to face. Did we stop trying and making sure that we were uh, allowing our students to take to, to have agency in their learning. Can you please go to the next slide? Um, one way that we made sure that we were doing this was by actively asking for students for feedback 
as you can see here, this is a screenshot of one of the surveys that we gave all of our students. You can see over 2000 students responded and we asked them about how their online learning experience was like. All, uh, all details such as are you do you have enough information to be able to complete your assignments? Uh, do you feel comfortable under the schedule? Are the resources and, and tasks that your teachers are giving you? Are they being helpful for your learning? And all of the information that we gathered from this survey, we then used and we implemented a lot of changes in the way that we were organizing online learning. And in fact, many of the things that we discovered here that, that students said were being helpful and were having a positive impact in their learning, we continued implementing even though we are now already offering face-to-face -face education. And we plan to continue implementing these things in the future because we recognize that the world has in fact changed after this pandemic and everything that we have learned in terms of our online learning experience, we can use now to enhance and enrich our, our curriculum towards the future. Assessment and evaluation is another fundamental piece of all of our approach to self-directed learning and agency. Um, for, at, for us, assessment is much more than being able to identify students' achievement. Assessment for us is truly a part of learning, and as such, we, we are convinced that formative assessment over summative assessment is really what can have a positive impact on learning. And the research that supports this is overwhelming. So um, we, are, we are implementing a model which we call evidence for learning, in which we encourage teachers and students to move away from a model of summative assessment tasks to a model in which they are constantly collecting and gathering evidence of their learning in terms of the knowledge that they're acquiring, the understandings that they are developing, the actions that they are taking, and the competencies that they are developing. And we do this in several different ways. There are here, you can see two examples of how this is implemented, but in, in practice, this really means that both of our, our, our teachers and our students for themselves as self-assessment and peer assessment need to be constantly looking at the, um, at the work that they're producing, at, at how they're acting and gathering evidence of their learning in that way. And ultimately understanding that we can conclude a summative grade based on formative evidence and that there is no need for the learning to stop so that we can have an exam or a high stakes test at the end of the unit to be able to really identify whether a student has learned or not. And really this is for us a, a very important um, uh, model that we're implementing because really it's what, what really makes sure that learning is never ending and there is not a moment where you stop learning and you can you have to stop and you have to assess it. It's something that is ongoing and assessment is a really important part of that. So that is also a great way that we make sure that students have agency in their learning is by themselves assessing that and demonstrating their learning in whatever way is best for them. And that is all for me now. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you can enjoy the rest of our presentation. Um, thank you, Daniela. Um, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here today. Uh, we would like to start by saying that the greatest influence on the quality of learning and teaching in a classroom is the quality of teacher. Um, so at SEK schools, the model of professional learning and collaborative planning promotes that everyone is responsible for learning and teaching and this is how we also provide our staff um, with an opportunity for agency and self-directed learning as well as we do for students as Daniela has just explained. So all members of staff see themselves as both learners and leaders of learning. Um, as we all include all of our staff uh, in professional learning, not only um, our faculty. So at SET Qatar, uh, collaborative planning time was allocated within the school day since we opened in 2013. And uh, from last academic year, we started to build the professional learning time within the school calendar and the school day. So right now we've got three uh, days devoted to professional learning in our calendar for this academic year. And every Tuesday there are two hours allocated for professional learning and collaborative planning time. Um, 
Research indicates that learning occurs better as a result of developing a community of learners who interact with each other rather than a group of people who attend specific lectures or workshops or um, any courses. And uh, that might be the, the end of it. Um, so um, on the slide, on this slide, you can see that um, this is the model that we would use uh, for our professional learning here at SECATOR. So research also demonstrate that a transformation in teaching can be achieved through action research that involves inquiry and interactive teaching. Um, there are many authors such as Weiner or uh, Marston Haiti that propose action research as the model uh, that views the teachers as the researchers themselves who aim to improve the quality of the teaching. Um, during these inquiries, all teachers are engaged in research. Sometimes it might be individually, but mostly um, we encourage them to work together and collaborate. And these research findings are used to, um, to inform the practice across the school. Uh, again, not only individually, as these findings will be shared across the teams, uh, so everyone would benefit um, from those research and from those findings. Uh, the faculty then uh, decide what part of the teaching practice they would need to um, or want to strengthen as they want to find out what is working well in other classrooms around the world and then share those findings. Um, for those inquiries, that's when we use, as I said, the uh, spiral of inquiry by Helen Timpoli, uh, Linda Kayser and Judy Holbert, as you can see on the on the slide. Um, then um, the faculty decide where they want to take the teaching practice next, uh, while um, well, well, teaching as 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 inquiry is about teachers learning. It's about what interests and motivates them as IB practitioners. Um, it's important to highlight that the objective would be to meet the needs of their own students, of course. Um, the decisions that they make or the decisions that we make as, as, as faculty uh, are based on the impact on children's learning. So not only on the academic impact, but also on the social, um, the emotional and the personal. So therefore, um, uh, teachers performance will be assessed based on the children's learning outcomes and gathering evidence of uh, the impact of professional learning uh, helps to make explicit the changes or, or those decisions that we're taking um, to, to implement in our classes. So it allows us to really focus on what we have learned and how we can see the impact of that learning. Um, this type of reflection will imply thinking more about the so what and the what now. Um, well, here at SEG Qatar, um, once a month, teams meet for around 75 minutes, where one member of the team serves as a timekeeper and another one as a facilitator. So we're always looking at student work and assessment evidence and thinking of the best way to adapt instruction uh, to meet the students' needs, as, as, as we've mentioned before, right? Um, each member of the team then reports on, on an instructional change or what they're going to work, what they promised in the, in the previous meeting that they're going to be working to uh, or trying to implement in their classrooms with evidence of how it went. And then the colleagues share ideas or provide some suggestions uh, for next steps. After this, the team will discuss um, a new article or a book chapter or a video um, about a chosen topic. And uh, for last academic year, for example, we decided that all those conversations were going to go around um, formative assessment as an umbrella uh, topic. Um, then each member shares a new classroom practice that they're going to implement in the coming month. Um, and then um, the, the, the cycle uh, continues. It's extremely important that um, time is devoted to reflect collaboratively because that's part of the enriching process of, of, the, 
of, of the whole uh, program. So um, for quality change to happen, teachers need time to collaborate and for effective co-construction of that knowledge about the strands or the areas to, to, to develop further, um, collaborative time is the time for reflection, uh, for planning, um, horizontal and vertical, uh, not only within each grade level or within each department, but within each program or state, but also as a, as a whole school. Uh, in Qatar, uh, I think we're very lucky because most schools would have their collaborative planning time on the same day. So this also allows for the collaboration uh, to happen across the schools. Um, so we have job alikes, uh, we share best practices, run mini PD sessions with expertise from each school, from each department, uh, etc. So I think uh, it's, a, it's a luxury. Um, at our school, we have also used uh, this time to plan uh, team building activities where all members of staff are included to create a sense of belonging and then um, everyone feels included also in the professional learning time. Um, I would like to, um, to finish by saying that it is extremely important for us schools to find opportunities to create um, a community of learners for supportive and collaborative relationships to, to grow. And um, technology is key to supporting self-directed learning among students or staff. And this is what um, my colleague Joaquin uh, will introduce now. So thank you so much. Sorry, Joaquin. Sorry, you are you are mute. Mute yourself, please. So thank you, Veronica. I was saying, yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for attending this speech. Greetings from Gre Madrid. Greetings from Spain. I hope I can give you some ideas about how to use technology to improve creativity, communication, and, and collaboration. Um, I'm now in the children, children's assembly of one of our schools. This is low five technology, but it works very good to promote discussion, communication and participation. But I suppose that you are expecting me to see something more, more high fee, more high tech. Uh, everything that I'm going to explain now is based on the work of uh, our institution, uh, the work that has developed the past five years. In September uh, 2015, we began to imagine what a virtual uh, classroom of the future may look like. Uh, following a design thinking process, we got four design principles. The first one was that any student could learn anywhere and at any time. The second one, that any student should, should have access to all the necessary and relevant tools and content for learning and working. The third one was that any student should have continuous contact with all his colleagues to develop a real collaborative work. And the final one, that any student should be provided uh, with tools to reflect on their learning process and results. And the same, by the way, should apply to all our teachers with a special emphasis on the idea of the learning community of collaborative work and open innovation. In the year 2015, when this process began, some reference to the new generation learning environments, learning management system began to be published, which point to the need to create ecosystems of personalized applications for all members of the educational community. This exercise took us on a journey of a few years, more years than we expected, a journey whose end we were not entirely clear about. Shortly after the conclusion of the first phase of this project, the pandemic arrived. Everything we had done proved fortunately useful. We even felt that we had given um, a kind of answer in advance to a question that was now being asked. This is because in our ecosystem, we currently have 
for instance, video conference tools, tools for collaborative work, tools for challenge and project-based learning that both teachers and students can use, access to the integrated catalog of all the physical and digital resources of our libraries, access to the complete catalog of teaching resources and textbooks in a personalized way in a personalized self, personal and joint online digital notebooks, own video platform where we can share broadcasts, live webinars, recordings, etc. Um, scientific simulators covering all the STEM disciplines. And we have, of course, a proper learning management system specific to the IB. We also have tools for cataloging uh, web pages, markers that can be grouped together and share with the rest of the community. We have personalized digital portfolios to collect the evidence for, uh, for learning that our students produce. We have a personalized academic dashboard, learning analytics that we want to use to promote a more personalized mentoring. And finally, we have also all the office tools that probably all of us have in our work environment. We used this environment during the first months of the epidemic between March and June 2020. And we were immediately aware that we had to complement this personalized work environment with some additional tools because it was likely that we that the new course 2021 would have to work in an hybrid environment, part presencial, <coughs> part online. So that way we made um, two decisions. The first one was to equip all our classrooms with cameras and speaker microphones connected to our MySec so that no student will miss a class regardless of where they were. And the second one was to promote the flipped classroom model by using our video platform and providing each school with a one button studio to simply record the classes. I would like to show you a very short video about how the, our high flex model works. Very good, yeah. So we have learned many things along this journey, but I'm going to stress just three of them, just three of them. Um, we need to conceive and design a robust and adaptive technological infrastructure to be prepared for any circumstance, and that includes systems, architecture, hardware, software, and connectivity. And also, of course, digital competence training for teachers and students. The second one is uh, that we should be quite sure that from now on, we are going to live in a hybrid world, on life, as call it, an European Union project. And in the education sector, we will need to think in very fluid teaching and learning scenarios. And uh, the final one is that we need to use learning technologies as a means to empower analysis, critical thinking, collaboration, self-directed work and constant reflection. We must bear in mind that technology is at the same time a kind of support or facilitator, but also a kind of light infuse that give us new ideas about how to manage our learning process. Thank you for having followed this presentation and uh, we look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, the three of you. Wonderful interventions, wonderful panelists. Thank you very much for addressing such interesting topics in this uh, global situation now in education. I've been checking uh, some of the, uh, the, um, the questions we've received in the online chat. Thank you very, everybody to participate, asking questions to our panelists. And I've just rescued 
three questions. One of each is from uh, one is for, from Daniela, uh, and is from Domingo Market. He wants to know if you can share with him the uh, the ideal number of students in the classes to address in the best way agency co-creation and self-directed learning in a collaborative way. Do you have any tips, recommendations from for him to do it? Thanks. Yes. Hi. Um, so I think that the amount of students per teacher needs to be depends a lot in the age of the students. Of course, the younger the students, the ratio needs to be smaller. But uh, in general, I would say that for primary and secondary and high school, it would be about 20 students per, per teacher. But also, I think it's very important to remember that when we're talking about um, self-directed learning and agency being a, a big part of, of the learning and of the organization of the, of, the, of the community, is the fact that it is not everything is responsibility of the teacher. The responsibility is shared among, among, among teachers and among students. For instance, in terms of assessment, the teacher is not the only one who needs to be doing the assessment or, or gathering the information or looking for the evidence of learning in the students. It, it is actually much more powerful when the students do it for themselves as self-assessment or when we do it as peer assessment. And that's why a key component that will make agency and self-directed learning work is trust, is the teacher trusting the student, the student trusting each other, and the student trusting the teacher. I hope I answered your question. Thank you, Dani, very much. I hope that the question is answered, of course. Um, we rescued another question. In this case, I want to address it to Veronica because it's, it's about the collaborative planning, professional learning she's explained. And uh, it's from Milena from Serbia. She wants to know how to um, assess the teacher's performance in the school. If you have any model, how you do it, what do you think about it? Thanks. Sorry, Veronica, you are on mute. No problem. I'm sorry. Um, actually, as we've been saying, I think it's all connected to that agency and 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 giving the teachers the ownership to improve. So um, we we don't usually do the traditional observation that you would go into a classroom and someone observes you and gives you the the, the feedback that then there's not much time to implement. Um, so we want to put it back. To, to the to the expertise within the whole school. So teachers will be looking at their own evidence of the impact that, that they're having on the students learning. As I said before, uh, it's how you how they assess what the students have learned and uh, the impact. So when we usually ask them questions like how will I know the impact on my practice? Or um, how will I know the impact on my students and the learning? How will I know the impact of the learning on, on my colleagues? Because again, it's all it's all a community of, of learners. Um, and then reflect, and that's why we, we don't usually do this um, inquiry individually, and, and it's more important to do it collectively so that they can have the, the a whole team of, of, of people supporting or faculty supporting, providing feedback. And when you come to the team and you say, OK, this is what I implemented last week uh, or last month and it's been working. This is the evidence that I've collected and this is how it's working or this is how it's not working. Then by sharing this, other people may, may, may provide you with some next steps, right? So, um, yeah, that's, I hope that that answered the question. Thank you very much, Veronica, for your feedback and expertise. And uh, I, we have another question in this case is for Joaquin. Uh, somebody wants to know uh, with which age group do you practice in SEK schools? This kind of learning, the hybrid learning you've introduced during your panel. Thanks. Um, thank you, Bea. Yeah, in fact, um, in fact, we are practicing, we are practicing it with all groups, including primary education. But I would say that especially in secondary and high school, a teacher can be in his classroom and the students can be in the same class. 
in other parts of the school or even in their own homes. That is the sense of uh, HiFlex, the HiFlex technology. But in addition, we record classes in advance to reinforce uh, the flip learning model, allowing each student to follow them when they can or when they consider it appropriate. So it fits to, I would say, it fits to every every um, yeah. every age. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for the three of you to answer these questions. I hope everybody feels answered. If not, we will share this uh, the contact info on this presentation when we are finishing to address more questions. And now we would like to share three takeaways um, that schools might like to ponder as you make plans for this uncertain future that we have for our staff and our students. So we hope it can be useful for all of you. First of all, in terms of agency, co-creation and self-directed learning, we believe that students should be able to design their elements for their own learning itinerary, negotiate with the, con the content that they consider more appropriate based on agreed objectives with their teachers or tutors. We also think that scaffolding with the appropriate support of technology can be used to facilitate student autonomous learning. The student then will be able to develop skills, self and peer assessment and skills that allow for working collaboratively with peers, teachers and others. Then in terms of our second topic, which is professional learning and collaborative planning, we believe that it is a key element to the success of a new learning and teaching model to address this professional learning and collaborative planning model. It can provide scaffolding to teachers to develop their own knowledge, skills and understandings. This will allow the effective implementation of a new learning and, and teaching model by provi providing them through collaboration and co-creation with the necessary tools in which the technology as it's been said, is a key element in professional learning and collaborative planning. And finally, in the learning technology, we consider that technology is essential for an enriching learning, collaboration and communication. We will emphasize the need to adapt technology to allow presential, face-to-face, -face distance, blended or hybrid learning as it's needed. Schools need to provide a robust and flexible technological infrastructure and resources to allow, allow the best approach of learning and teaching and to allow the adaptation to these current circumstances. Technology is key to support self-directed and autonomous learning through synchronous and asynchronous learning and teaching. So having said that, these three takeaways, we would like to thank all of you for being here today with us. We hope you've enjoyed this experience with our three colleagues and we want to share with you their contact info, their contact email and their account in Twitter in the case you want to contact them directly and um, hope it's been a nice hour with us and now uh, we want to share with you again the video we've shared at the beginning from the World Education Week so that you can wrap up a little bit what you've learned this hour. Thank you very much again for being here and we'll be in touch. Enjoy this week. Thanks. Hello. My name is Vikas Porta. The reason why we're organizing this global showcase for World Education Week is we believe that schools have incredible expertise in making sure that learning outcomes improve. Given the state of the world, we want to see the expertise from this particular school being replicated in schools all over our planet so that the world becomes better for everyone. That is why I congratulate this school for what it does and hope that those listening can, can take away conclusions as to how they should actually approach their own improvement journeys. Thank you all for participating, and I look forward to seeing you in many of the other events this coming week. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for supporting this incredible work, without whom we couldn't have put together this global showcase. Thank you, and I wish you well for this event. 
fast-paced social, economic and technology-driven change is redefining our world. And having a broad range of skills such as creativity and problem solving has become far more important than being able to memorise information. To redefine how our children learn and to empower them for the future, parents, teachers and policymakers must stop overlooking a powerful part of the solution. Learning through play. Play is the rocket fuel of child development and there is a growing body of evidence to support that play is fundamental for children's positive growth and well-being over time. It is also an essential way to foster the skills required to thrive in today's world. The LEGO Foundation aims to build a future in which learning through play empowers children to become creative, engaged, lifelong learners. To do so, we work with a range of partners around the world to change the hearts and minds of all of those who influence children's lives through our programmes, research and advocacy, so they can all embrace the transformative power of play. Examples of what we do include making sure that caregivers, practitioners and policymakers understand the importance of play, investigating, testing and scaling new ways to bring play-based learning into homes and schools, using play to help millions of the world's most vulnerable children cope with adverse childhood experiences and toxic stress, or conducting research with some of the world's leading research institutions. Please visit our website and follow us on social media to learn more. Language connects us all. It's how friendships are formed, ideas are shared, and lessons are learned. Language is how we find understanding and express love. It's how we communicate our successes, both big and small. It lays the groundwork for learning and growth. And for an increasingly diverse student population, it can be the key to achievement in school and beyond. That's why Rosetta Stone Education is dedicated to language and literacy. We offer solutions designed to support teachers and their emergent bilingual students, recognizing and celebrating the knowledge, culture, and languages they bring to our classrooms. Our products are founded on the adaptive blended learning model for individual needs, continuous progress monitoring for better learning outcomes, and culturally responsive pedagogies for more inclusive classrooms. With solutions aligned with proficiency standards, we support language learning while exploring academic subject areas, paving the way to better outcomes. Because for all of us, language is everything. For community. We talk a lot about teachers these days, but we rarely listen to them. Therefore, I am truly excited to join the T4 World Education Week to hear from teachers and school leaders all over the world how we can impact learning together. I am particularly looking forward to the Global Showcase. 100 schools sharing their expertise and best practices, I believe, will be a huge motivation for other schools around the globe. I'm equally impressed by the T4 Solutions Challenge, its finalists and their solutions to real world issues in education. This gives me hope that we can together turn around education globally. The Jacobs Foundation is a proud supporter of the T4 World Education Week because we share a vision to reimagine learning and education by bringing together the brightest people who understand how children learn. Let's do this together. <laughs> 